It is from the Gospel of John in the New Testament, uh, chapter 19, uh, verse 1. I'm going to read verse 1 and 2. Uh, then Pilate had Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip. The soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put a purple robe on him. Isaiah 53, verse 5. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Now, uh, from Acts chapter 1. Okay, um, verse 2. Well, I'll read 1 and 2. In my first, this is Luke speaking. In my first book, I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions through the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive, and he talked to them about the kingdom of God. The word of God uh, for all people everywhere, thanks be to God. Um, now, I guess, uh, did y'all recognize a theme in uh, those verses? Maybe? You can unmute them, Alexi, and see if they can answer. 40 days. 40 days. 40, 40 lashes. Uh, 40 seem to be uh, quite the magic number. Okay, so I'm going to turn on SoundCloud so I have just another way to post this. Um, and so you can make them quiet if you want to. Okay. Uh, so, now a colleague of mine from Pennsylvania uh, posted a meme on Facebook that caused me uh, to grin, chuckle a little. It said, this is the lentiest Lent I've ever lent it. Now, uh, you may recall Lent is with a capital L and with an E, uh, not the stuff in your pockets or that you're cleaning out of the dryer. Uh, it is uh, considered a 40-day period, not counting Sundays, uh, before Easter. Uh, it's known as a time of fasting, uh, a time where we examine our hearts, uh, our desires, a uh, time when we fast and study, uh, sit in silence, uh, meditate on the Word of God in order to make room for God, to make room for more of God. Now this year, uh, Lent began on February 26th, Ash Wednesday. Uh, I, along with several of you, uh, stood outside for six hours offering ashes uh, mixed with anointing oil uh, to those who stopped by, and also the ashes offered with communion for those who came uh, here and gathered in the sanctuary uh, to worship. You might remember I had laryngitis. I did not have problems breathing, so uh, I don't believe that I, I infected the whole population of Dundo. Uh, but nonetheless, the liturgy of the ashes uh, says, From dust you came, to dust you'll return. Repent and believe the gospel. Now that's sobering uh, news to a degree. Uh, and especially, especially when we're facing this uh, global pandemic, the idea of, of returning uh, to the ground. Ashes, they are a sign of death, and also a sign of repentance, a sign acknowledging that we are sinners, we make bad choices, uh, we disobey God's will uh, and God's word. The anointing oil, uh, that's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the power to not only repent and believe the gospel, uh, but also the power to go and to sin no more. Now, I didn't let anyone walk away without actually hearing the gospel, uh, the good news. Uh, the good news that Jesus loves us, uh, that this world is not the end and it's not as God intended. Hear me say that God will use this virus um, uh, to, for good, but God did not send this virus on the world as punishment or as a means to tell us something. Uh, but God will, will speak through it. I think that's really important. Uh, to remember and uh, 
if you have opportunities in nice and loving ways to, to help other people know that as well uh, because um, often I think that God ends up getting a bad rap when we blame him for things such as that. But I also shared within the gospel, too, uh, that they are beloved and that we are called um, to be strong and courageous, uh, that, that Jesus dies, uh, dies, that Jesus loves us, died for us, uh, even though we make bad choices, that we're fearfully and wonderfully made, and that God has a plan and purpose for each of us and that will never leave us nor forsake us. Now, February 26th uh, began our 40-day journey towards Easter. We're 28 days in it. Just 12 more days left in Easter, left with your Lenten fast, which I find it kind of amusing. I had determined when I go out to restaurants, um, I wouldn't order a drink unless, like, Chili's has the three for ten, it comes with a drink. And uh, so, well, I really haven't had the opportunity to go out to restaurants. So, um, anyway, uh, I, haven't, I haven't suffered so much, but not ordering a drink is, well, I was going to put the money in the plate still, but nonetheless. Um, when... The fast is over in 12 more days when we celebrate Easter on April 12th. Uh, Jesus risen from uh, the grave, sin and death defeated. Now little did we know when we started this Lenten journey in 2020 that before it was over we would begin another 40 day journey. Not called Lent, but quarantine. <laughs> and so before we continue on our journey this morning, if you would pray with me. Uh, God of grace and glory, uh, creator of the cosmos, healer of all nations, the one who knit each of us together in our mother's wombs, we come before you this day, gathered in a way unique and different, and yet we are the church, your body, connected by the power of your Holy Spirit. So may we feel it, Lord, really, really feel it, as sweep through our homes in power and might. Speak to us, Lord, speak in us. Speak to me, speak in me, that you might speak through me or in spite of me. And God, protect us from the evil one and any glitches that would keep your word from being heard or proclaimed and any germs that would uh, seek to invade our bodies. I pray this in Jesus' name, believing. Amen. Now, a, a little bit of... Well, that's... No, see, this thing prints it weird. And... Okay, Donna, I told you. All right, there we go. Okay. Uh, so, this other 40-day journey, uh, quarantine, it is hard to determine when it began. I decided to choose March 12th when Governor Hogan uh, called for the schools to be shut down for two weeks. Some children rejoicing and then some not so happy. Some parents not so happy. But, anyway, uh, by March 12th, uh, and five cases of COVID-19 had been confirmed in Maryland. Uh, we might consider this our Ash Wednesday. Uh, but a look globally, though, revealed the death and destruction this little thing was having, uh, really a, a means of concern. Now, you've been living it. The restrictions have been getting stronger and stronger. Uh, supposedly, only essential services are now open. It is quite surprising what is considered essential and what isn't, uh, like the, the church. We shouldn't be gathered here in this building today. Uh, that would be irresponsible. But, uh, but the church is not considered essential. The people of God are not considered essential. But car dealers are. Uh, Royal Farms builders are. Amazon employees are. Though Amazon Prime isn't getting us much uh, uh, early delivery anymore. Uh, PetSmart is essential. You can get cat and dog food and bird food at the grocery store. Uh, liquor stores uh, are essential because they sell milk, maybe? I don't know. Um, but uh, nonetheless, that's a topic for another day. <laughs> and maybe I'll, I'll tune in later this week with some thoughts on that. Now, the buzzword is shelter in place. And if you don't understand what that means, many are just yelling, stay at home. Now, that's after they are um, complaining on Facebook about how many people were in Walmart uh, or having just tipped that delivery person um, who, while they were staying at home, was not staying at home and being in contact with all sorts of people. But, but anyway, uh, but this shelter in place, the, the word uh, that is not quite as uh, um, user-friendly is quarantine. Now, a little research reveals uh, actually Googling the word 
and reading the definition from a trusted source, Merriam-Webster Collegiate Dictionary, quarantine, definition number one, is a period of 40 days. Anybody know that? Um, no. Now hold that thought. Um, number two was a definition about uh, ships and ports of entry. Uh, number three, uh, a restraint upon the activities or communication of persons or the transport of goods to prevent the spread of disease or pests. And number four is a state of enforced isolation. Three and four definitely hit home. This is seemingly where we are now, or at least close. But the first one, a period of 40 days, sounds a bit like our definition of Lent. Quarantine literally means 40 days. And it stems from the Italian, uh, like I looked up how to pronounce that earlier, and I don't remember, but it's uh, Quaranta, I don't want to blow that, anyway. So, uh, but it is a name uh, given, it's from the Italian, it's a name given to the practice of keeping infected ships at anchor for 40 days before coming into port uh, to protect the coastal cities from plague epidemics. Now, I think there's some irony uh, that the term and practice quarantine uh, started in Ven Venice, Italy in the 14th century. Uh, ironic, because that is one of the places that is seeing uh, the largest outbreak. As I recall, I just read that Prince Charles has been diagnosed with COVID-19, but that was, that's a left turn. Sorry. I'm, okay. um, now, a little U.S. history in regard to quarantines. Um, in early America, protection against imported disease, it fell on local and state jurisdiction, uh, but they weren't paying a whole lot of attention to that, and, and uh, continual yellow fever outbreaks. Uh, Congress then passed federal quarantine legislation in 1878. In 1921, the last local um, uh, station of quarantine was passed over to the federal government, and uh, then in the late 19th century, uh, cholera from European passenger ships uh, gave the federal government even more authority. Uh, now the Centers for Disease Control are in charge of quarantines, uh, and um, though not infringing on state and local rights, and the list are in an executive order of the president. Uh, includes cholera, diphtheria, transmittable tuberculosis, um, viral hem hemorrhagic fever, uh, for instance Ebola, uh, the plague, smallpox, yellow fever, and then severe acute respiratory syndromes, SARS, which COVID-19 is an example. COVID-19, one of them, and now we're all quarantined, or if you must, sheltering in place. A, a period of 40 days. Now, if I've calculated correctly, uh, and it all is returned to normal on April 26th, uh, like we are being told presently, but we know that that can change. But, but nonetheless, then 45 days will have elapsed um, from March 12th. So the governor seems to be demanding an extra five days. Now, that's more than God asks, right? Um, but um, I'm not attacking our governor. Uh, for all intents and purposes, he has been out in front of this pandemic as much as possible. Uh, so Now, you may have caught on by now. 40 is a popular number, not necessarily for birthdays, uh, but for Lent, uh, from Lent to quarantine, and then those scripture passages that I read from the outside, uh, said, now trust me, I didn't read all of them. You might have thought I was reading all of them, uh, but 40 is mentioned in scripture 146 times. Uh, I Googled that this week, I, did, I didn't look them all up. Um, now, there are several numbers that are used repeatedly in scripture, and 40 is one of them. Also, three and seven, now, you might be surprised to know that 3, 7, and 40, especially as it has to deal with time, is, is often a round number or an estimation, not a precise reckoning. And so you have to, though, remember that that was a day and age uh, where people weren't wearing watches, they weren't carrying around smartphones or appointment books, uh, there weren't calendars hanging on the wall. So there was no demand for exact numbers, no preoccupation with numerical or chronological precision. And, and there are still areas in the world that are not governed by time, as we know it. If any of you all have traveled out of the country, um, not, to the, not to Western countries, but, but to other, and, and Phoebe, you might know this from experience in the Philippines, uh, living it, yes. um, that, that time is kind of relative. And so if church starts at 10, people might start wandering in at 9.45 or 10.30. Uh, but my first
first um, experience with that was when, in 1996, with the Wesley Foundation at University of Maryland, we went to Africa University in Zimbabwe. And we were kind of walking around exploring, and, and one of the men who worked there, I looked at him and I said, well, what time does the sun set? Sunset's my favorite color. I don't get up early enough for sunrise, but I love the sunset. And he looks at me, and I said, well, what time is the sunset? Like, what time does the sun go down? And he looks at me, and he's like, he said, when it sets? Okay, so 40, not necessarily exact, but there are times where it's not necessarily an estimation. Now, these number three is a few, seven, a few more, and 40, a lot more. I'm certain Noah was hoping for three now, uh, and the people of Israel, three, but it wasn't to be so. Now, throughout Scripture, 40 days, 40 nights, 40 years, 40 people, 40 stripes, that uh, lashes. Now, that isn't an estimation. That is an exact. Uh, and, and I would add, uh, though it's not mentioned as 40, uh, 40 weeks of gestation. These were times of testing, of hardship, of affliction, discipline, uh, times of humility and repentance, of growth, times associated, though, and I think this is important to note, with new developments in the history of God's mighty acts, especially the acts of salvation. Uh, the 40 days and 40 nights of rain, 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 100% chance of rain, that's also on Katie's Extraordinary Playlist from that brief time I sang in a youth choir, but that was about a boy, not about my voice. So, um, a flood wiping out the whole earth, every living creature, including all of humanity, all of vegetation, uh, everything that was not in the ark with Noah and his wife and, and his three sons and their wives and all of the animals um, had to be fun. And uh, then uh, we find when the flood waters uh, subsided, uh, Noah sending out a raven and the raven flying over them for 40 days. We also find that a uh, raven will offer sustenance to Elijah, uh, the, uh, the raven, an assurance that God sees and cares for us. Now, uh, Bryn and Ian and, and, was there another kid online that I missed? Um, you know, we often let you know that that is a happy uh, story in the children's Bible, you know, rainbows and, and, and smiling animals, but it's not. Uh, well, the event isn't. But the fact that Almighty God would allow humanity a, a chance to start over. Humanity being delivered through the floodwaters, salvation to impart. Moses, 40 years in Egypt, 40 years as a shepherd before he encountered the burning bush and the call of God, fasting and praying and leading the people through the Red Sea, fasting and praying for 40 days, uh, twice it talks about that, actually three times, uh, leading the people through the Red Sea, delivered through the waters, salvation to impart, fasting and praying as the New Covenant, the Ten Commandments uh, with the people of Israel was made, and the law is given, and God's presence is made known. And then the spies in the Promised Land, um, the land given to Israel by God, a land flowing with milk and honey. It took 40 years to get there, and they then passed the Jordan River on dry ground, uh, delivered through the water, salvation to impart but the people of Israel had gone and done it again. They were horribly disobedient. So 40 years in the wilderness to try to get the Egypt, the slavery mentality, out of God's people. And now Moses is face down praying, calling on God not to destroy Israel. I imagine he had tears in his eyes, delivered through the waters, salvation to impart. Goliath, the giant, stands in defiance. Now this is a good story to find in your children's Bibles stands against Israel, threatening them. And what Israel, though, and Israel was shaken in their boots, but what they didn't know, that David, a shepherd boy, would be delivering food to his brothers, who were soldiers in the army. And he would defeat this giant with a rock gathered from a river. The battle is the Lord's. The people of Israel, again, delivered through the waters, salvation to impart. Uh, judges, sent to govern the people of Israel as they were in the promised land to, to lead them on the paths of righteousness, many serving for 40 years, peace as a part of their reign, but it appeared to be all for nothing, for the people did what was right in their own eyes. They demanded a king like all the other nations, and that's what they got. In the first three kings, Saul, 
uh, David and Solomon each served for 40 years. Elijah, he ushered in the time of the prophets, uh, the time of God calling the prophets uh, to, to urge God's people, nearly begging God's people to, to just obey, to, to choose life. And so Elijah assured that he is not alone. Uh, he slept under the broom tree and was fed by the raven. And as he rested, he was provided the strength to travel 40 days to the holy mountain, to Mount Sinai, uh, the place that Moses received the Ten Commandments. And at, on that mountain, God spoke to him in a gentle whisper. God's not done with his people. Salvation to impart Ezekiel, one of those prophets, demonstrating the years of exile by laying on his side for 40 days. That couldn't have been comfortable, but better than the 390 days uh, for the others. Uh, but here in that, uh, the, the prophet uh, informing the people that they'll be in exile. Uh, they, they will be taken from their lands because, um, because they were disobedient. The prophets, though, calling them to obedience, to, to give them a chance to claim their inheritance, the kingdom of God, salvation to impart. Jonah, that's a good kid's story, too. Uh, another prophet, 40 days delivering the message of, of destruction to this pagan city, to, to this city of, of people making horrible choices, to, to a city full of people that, that were not considered uh, the people of God. And, and, you know, repent. Uh, he spent 40 days shouting the message, repent or you'll be destroyed. And uh, they repented. They, they put on sackcloth, sat in ashes, and, and they turned to God for forgiveness. Now, this didn't make Jonah very happy. That doesn't make sense, but, but that's not the point. Uh, you might know that Jonah was delivered through the belly of a whale, uh, through the waters of the sea, salvation to impart even to the Gentiles, even to those deemed unredeemable and unforgivable. And then we have Jesus, the Son of God in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted and tried, just as the people wandering in the wilderness for 40 days, 40 years. Uh, Jesus hungry, uh, tempted by the devil, and enticed. And this was an enticement um, for Jesus, though, to, to understand his identity and his mission according to the world. That, that it was enticing uh, Jesus to have his success judged by the standards of the world. Uh, he would have been a horrible success by the standards of the world. Uh, he ended up at the end with, well, John likes to say he was at the cross, uh, but he ended up at the end betrayed and denied. The rest of them abandoned him. Uh, not very successful in the world's eyes. But uh, the, the devil enticed him, hey, there's Bailey. Um, to indeed uh, identify with the world instead of finding his identity in God. His mission defined by God to usher in the kingdom of God, not to rule over the kingdoms of this world. Uh, Jesus delivered through the waters of the womb 40 weeks in Mary's womb, having stepped out of heaven, uh, making, taking the nature of a servant, born a human being, his body being intricately woven in his mother's womb, a human, a boy, with a purpose, salvation to impart, delivered through the waters also of baptism, salvation to impart. Jesus, having suffered betrayal, abandonment, beatings, 39 lashings, uh, Deuteronomy said 40 would bring uh, um, shame, um, and, and also learning later that 40 would bring death, so, so just, just to the point of death. And then having been mocked and, and spit upon, denied, and nailed to a cross, humiliated, pierced for our transgressions, uh, but dying to rise again on the third day. And, and nailed to the cross, that I, I, I thought I read here, I forgot to say, but also his, his nail pierced side in which water indeed gushed out. And then he appeared to his disciples, to the people, eyewitnesses for 40 days, marking this event in history. That's really important to, to note. Um, I think it says in Acts, like uh, over 150 people saw the risen Christ. Undeniable. Uh, an event in history that cannot be changed. Uh, Jesus delivered us through his blood, through the waters of his nail, nail pierced side. By his wounds we are healed. Salvation to impart. 
40. A time of testing, temptation, trials, affliction, growth, assurance, provision, recreating God's mighty acts of salvation, never giving up on us. It's no wonder the early church called for a time of fasting, a time of drawing near to God uh, through the Bible, studying it, and, and meditation, through prayer, silence, through acts of mercy and compassion. Forty days to grow in grace, to become stronger in the faith, to become more loving and obedient in response to God. Lent, the 40 days, a time to focus our hearts focus on our hearts. What is it that we love? What is it that we desire? Uh, to examine and to be honest about how our uh, desires and love our loves are most often disordered. Like my uh, desire for chips and chocolate are disordered in this time of crisis. Well, always, because in reality uh, they uh, uh, don't make a healthy mind or body. Rather than loving God, our disordered loves and, and desires, rather than loving God and neighbor, we do attach ourselves to other things. And some of them are, are very good things, and some not so good. And then we give those things more attention, uh, and give the things of this world more attention than they deserve. And they do become false gods. And we've talked about that before. If you think about those things that you spend the most time uh, with, and compare that, and most time, and most money, and those kinds of things, and compare that to the time you spend with God. And, and I'm, I'm just as guilty. Let the 40 days of examination, of, of growth, it's necessary in that to pay attention to what comes between us and God, what grabs our attention, and, and what, um, what holds us, realistically holds us captive. We name them, and then we submit them to Jesus. We can lay them at the foot of the cross. Because uh, Easter, while it is current living in uh, the, the power of the resurrection, is also past tense. Uh, Jesus has already overcome sin and death. And so we are given the ability, the power through the Holy Spirit to, to give those uh, to, to Jesus. And, and it is said in Scripture to go and sin no more. We have the power of the Holy Spirit to not intentionally sin. I don't know if we exercise that very often, myself included. And, and he overcame sin, overcame evil and death as he hung on the cross and rose from the grave. And in that, we are assured that we're forgiven, reconciled, and offered a fresh, vital power to move forward. During Lent, as we give things up, it isn't to lose weight or to save money or to get healthier, not that any of those are bad things, but it is to make room for God. I think we have disordered our, our Lent to focus it on our, ourselves. Um, I, and I think I mentioned Ash Wednesday, I had to laugh. My cousin was like, what are you giving up for Lent? Like, she goes to church once a year, and that's Christmas Eve at, at, at Patapsco. Like, you know, celebrate Lent. Um, what are you giving up? What about making room for God? And, and in that making room, that's God's desire for us. God wants to give us more and more and more and more. Um, and, and God is continually inviting us to open our lives, uh, to make space to receive more and more uh, through Christ. And, and um, we've been doing some short videos. Uh, there's two I haven't posted, Anna and Cheyenne. And, and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contact uh, um, Bryn and see if uh, she'll do one too. And some of you all who sing, Sheila, you're still there. Uh, it is to, to give us that 20 seconds as we wash our hands appropriately. Hey, Donna knows some songs too. Um, and there's Rhea and Karen. I know, like, okay, y'all have ignored my text, but uh, still, and Sharon actually has said she's going to do one too. But anyway, to use those 20 seconds um, as a means to grow closer to God. Oh, Nick is doing one as well. Uh, whether it's praying the Lord's Prayer. Uh, or um, singing Amazing Grace. Um, Diane did one too. I think she's on here. Um, or uh, she did Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And um, I haven't listened to Cheyenne's yet. Um, and Anna was my God is so big. But, but in our 20 seconds, uh, Greatest Thy Faithfulness Works, uh, realistically about any first verse of any song, Joy to the World, I like singing the, the verse that 
that says, um, no more let sin and sorrow grow, nor thorns infest the ground, because I, I just think that that applies uh, to, to our situation now. But at the sink, washing your hands for 20 seconds, no happy birthday song, no ABCs, unless you're learning them, but use it as a time to, to grow closer uh, to God in that. God wants to give us more and more and more. Wants us to, to grow in grace, to become stronger in faith, and to respond to his love, uh, to his offering of more and more, to be more loving and to be more obedient. 40 days to focus our hearts. What is it that we love? What is it that you love? What is it that you desire most? Be honest about it. And submit them to Christ. So, um, I think I, I did talk about this one earlier, that, that Easter, uh, Easter is, is celebrated every Sunday. So you don't have to give up that thing for Sunday, but that's just another story. But uh, every day we have the opportunity, every moment of every day, to accept God's invitation for more and more. To accept the Lord's invitation to exchange our disordered desires. Um, that's entropy in chemistry, that everything moves towards disorder. But our God is, is, is not a God of chaos, but a God of order. So we have that invitation to, to exchange that disorder for resurrection power, uh, for, for the uh, fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, um, I know these and I'm just, uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control, uh, to, to live into those um, spiritual gifts that, that God has given us, um, whether it is healing or miracle working or administration or hospitality or generosity, um, and there's a bunch more. Ephesians 4, 1 Corinthians 12, uh, Romans 12 lists some, but that's not exhaustive. But Lent, 40 days. This quarantine, uh, this 40 days, I think it's a, a, a new Lent. It's a new 40 days. A new opportunity as we are sequestered, as you are kind of contained. I'm not just, uh, some of y'all are working from home, but you know, then you don't have the commute, but not just to organize the, the junk drawer and, and those kinds of things, but but to grow in grace, to, to read, to study, to pray, to sing, um, to reach out and connect, and, and, and as safely as you can and ought, uh, but, but to find yourself preparing for, for that huge celebration of resurrection. Um, to, to be able to celebrate all that, that God has given us, that, that salvation that God has given us, that, that life eternal that God has given us. And, and that eternity doesn't start with your last breath on earth. It starts now. It starts when you accept Christ. When will we, when will I uh, learn to, to live that life of, of power, of, of, of confidence, of courage? God did not grant us a, a, a spirit of fear one of power and love and self-control. When will we, um, when will we, I'm going to use the word attack, when will we attack uh, the, the virus of sin uh, just as the virus of COVID-19 is being attacked? When will we go at it with such, um, with such force that, that we, are, we are working so hard for it not to be spread? When will we accept uh, the, the invitation for more and more, and in that more and more, uh, coming to understand a little bit more how wide, how long, how deep, how high uh, God's love is for us. The love demonstrated uh, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, proving God's love for us. A love that cannot be calculated. Amen. You all know this. <laughs> in the assurance of God's love for you, that you are loved by God, you have the ability to love God with heart, soul, mind, body, strength, to ask for more and more Jesus. And that's why I love when you kids take communion and you want a big piece, or you want seconds more and more.